So I know a lot of bugs are happening right now where people's currencies have disappeared or partially disappeared. Things like prisms, enhancement cores, ascended shards, as well as glimmer were missing from folks inventory. Now Bungie is currently working on a fix. I wanted to actually go over breakneck today. We did get to cover Harlight before we got booted from the servers, but considering we probably won't be online until much later this evening, if not tomorrow, let's go over sandbox update 2.7.1. Now, the majority of these changes are actually bug fixes, surprisingly. Considering we have, like, even more bugs after these bug fixes. I would hate to be that guy at Bungie, right? Just the guy that has to run around, putting fires out and fixing bugs. Can you imagine how much those guys hate Telesto? But let's hit this sandbox update patch notes. First up, activities. Pit of Heresy. Improves some performance issues in the Chamber of Suffering encounter that could reduce frame rates. They also fix an issue where players could die when transitioning from Necropolis encounter to the Tunnels of Despair. Fix an issue where players could get out of the environment in the Tunnels of Despair. All right, so Pit of Heresy overall. Got a quality of life update. You won't have any materials in your inventory when you go in there, but at least that frame rate is solid. Moving on. Garden of Salvation improved performance issue that could occur when chunks of land return or are removed during the Sanctified Mind encounter. Improve the visual indication for when a tether source hub is on or off. Add a text notification when a Vex sacrifices on a relay. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I have not run a raid since Season of Undying. That's how long it's been since I ran a raid. It's not that I don't like to raid. I love to raid. But I hate that the activity mod is tied to the season, right? Like, I wish they would update that season to season or something just kind of breathe some life back into rates maybe i stand alone on that but moving on nightfall the ordeal reduce weekly completions needed to bring it in line with other challenges players now need three completions on adept two completions on hero or one completion on legend or master Alrighty then now moving on director players can now shortcut directly to their roster by selecting their empty fire team slots or by invoking the roster shortcut on director map screens when an activity is selected fire team leaders can now navigate left and right to get to quests and rosters respectively then back to return to selected activities so i was in the game earlier for about four or five games of crucible and i was actually tinkering around with the directory pretty nice a little more fluid doesn't hang you up on top of that there's some ui changes as well in regards to people's fire teams and adding members it's like bungie is preparing us for the return of some sort of activity what is this you might ask i don't know but i think it starts with the t it's speculated right now but let's just get through these sandbox update notes first next we've got weapons seasonal bow mods should now work reliably with hush fix an issue where onslaught would reduce damage at two times rampage stack despite not increasing the rate of fire. They also adjusted the scope feedback and camera shake on Harlight firing, which is what we reviewed earlier. Yes, extremely nasty. If you are a fan of auto rifles, then you're going to be a fan of the change made to Harlight. Now, Ariana's Vow no longer gets more ammo when swapping from other special ammo weapons in Gambit. The starting ammo in Gambit increased from 6 to 10. Didn't know that was a thing. At the same time, who in their right mind has ever said, you know what? I can't play Gambit because of Ariana's Vow. Just breaks the game, man. Fix an issue. We're swapping from two tail fox to another power weapon would generate more ammo than intended. Jesus, another one. Fix an issue. Where Leviathan's Brett started PvE activities with more ammo than intended. Got all these weapons, dude, that are trying to break the game. Fix an issue. Where Xenophage started PvE activities with more ammo than intended. I was actually playing this Gambit match right here, or maybe it was the one before, where every time I invaded, I had two guys with Xenophage stare me down and would instantly kill me. Now, they were probably using things like Hive Armaments or maybe even Taken Armaments. Regardless, I felt like they never had a lack of heavy ammo for their xenophage it was extremely annoying now moving on armor the empower finishing dawn mod will no longer consume super energy if you do not have a mod equipped that is capable of benefiting from the charge with light buff the ever ready dawn mod will now stack correctly with weapon dexterity leg armor mods applicable to the weapon it covers the heavy handed mod will no longer trigger after death of telesto bolts they also increase the number of enemies that must be near the player to trigger the ammo granting benefit from two to three. Wow, really? Okay then. Several class item armor mods will now correctly provide diminishing returns when multiple copies of the mod are equipped. These mods include perpetuation, innovation, invigoration, insulation, and absolution. Worm God Crest and Winter's Guile no longer retain the status of their buff if the armor piece is unequipped. Thank God. Maybe we can use Worm God Crest now. The perk on Syntheseps now deactivates immediately when the armor piece is unequipped. The Transcendent Blessing Outlaw mod 
will now correctly appear in player's inventory. Previously, it would only be visible in the mod flyout when socketing a mod. Grenade Launcher Scavenger will no longer award special ammo for grenade launchers when the player picks up primary ammo bricks. Some of these bugs, man, I wish I knew beforehand, right? The last finisher removed from favorites will no longer override the fallback default class finisher. Giddy Laugh Rare Emote now has a valid icon and can be selected for equipping on the emote wheel. Shadowkeep Campaign Exotic Armor no longer has a potential to show up in Zer's weekly inventory. Gunsmith now properly assesses the own status of unflinching machine gun and unflinching hand cannon mods. So many just like random bugs, right? Like I don't even know how they get started. How did these things even get born? Now moving on to power and progression. Fix an issue that caused the amount of XP earned not to show up next to the XP progress bar. No, this issue may still exist for players after they reach the seasonal rank 100, but all XP earned will still apply to the seasonal ranks above 100. Change the progress bar description on the weekly strike challenge from bounties completed, which was incorrect, to strikes completed. Completion values for some of the Destination Obelisk weekly bounties have been reduced, fix an issue where the green and envy pursuits could stop progressing correctly. Players who are in this state should have their progress updated retroactively. Alrighty then. Now moving on to combat gameplay. Fix an issue in which Roaring Flames was buffing solar weapon damage while standing in Well of Radiance. Fix an issue in which Sunbreaker Titans were able to self-heal by bouncing a throwing hammer off of a wall. Fix an issue that prevented Warlocks from using Blink after switching weapons or canceling Sprint. Fix an issue that would sometimes cause the Sunbreaker Titan's Mortar Blast to deal little to no damage. Fix an issue that allows Sunbreaker Titans to gain stacks of Roaring Flames by destroying Telestial Projectiles. Ah shit. Well, I guess it was coming. Increase the Sunbreaker Titan's Mortar Blast damage by 70% inside a pve that's pretty substantial and they also have a bullet point and crucible i don't know if this is a typo or what was it trying to say that the mortar blast damage got an increase by 70 percent in pve and crucible the last gameplay fix though players will remain in space flight instead of going to a black screen when they load into a pvp match faster than their peers i gotta say guys some breakers we're some buggy bastards at least this season for my blinking warlocks hopefully this will be fixed for you i've been hearing about blink canceling on people now for well over a month. Now moving on, bounties and pursuits fix an issue that could prevent players from obtaining black armory key mode quests from A to 1 on multiple characters. Also the acquisition of black armory rare bounties significantly improved. Players that complete all available weekly and daily bounties will acquire a rare bounty within 5 days. Black armory keys take up space in pursuits will be removed if a player has already completed the mysterious box is a burden quest chain and unlock the exotic in their collections. The Gambit Prime Collector Bounty will now progress from picking up Luna Destination materials. Fix an issue affecting the newest sorting option in Pursuits. Newly acquired quests or quests that get updated will now be properly sorted to the top. Now moving on to just some general fixes, and again, everything pretty much in this update is like bug fixes. I know we're not getting a lot of woos out there going over all these things, but we gotta cover the bugs because someone out there is experiencing it and is waiting on a fix. Now the general bugs that are being fixed in collections, the playing with odds gamut emblem will now properly register as unlocked and can be reacquired accordingly. Fix an issue that was impacting the unveiling triumph Ares now ready to present her final lore entry to players who need it. The unveiling lore triumph now correctly reads number 11 lore pieces and will unlock upon obtaining the final lore piece. Fix an issue where certain randomized dialogue would play more or less frequently than intended. Fix an issue that was causing notifications to appear after transferring items using the Bnet D2 API. Oh my god. Dude, I'm happy about that one, right? Just transfer something from Destiny Item Manager and you've got all these notifications that pop up randomly. Improve performance when receiving certain messages from the server. The largest impact will be in the tower, but should help everywhere. Fix an issue that caused FOTO items to be stuck in the Postmaster as invisible items for some players. All right, guys, those are the bug fixes. Now, Moving on to what it is I wanted to bring up. So, as you know, Ginzer, or Ginzer, Ginzer, he's like the community hacker, right? Pretty much sees what's going on inside of Bungie's API, picks through all the code, and tells us what's to come. So far, and again, I am simply the messenger here, but it has been data mined that Trials is returning next season. I believe this is pulled directly from his Discord. The first line here states that it provides tremendous support toward the restoration efforts, 
and rekindle the lighthouse to usher in a new age of guardians. Then he's got the word worthy underneath that. Then complete the Empyrean Restorer Triumph. Then light the torch. And underneath it, and I guess it just kind of like puts it all together, it states, with the restoration of the lighthouse complete, trials of Osiris and more will return in Season of the Worthy. So it's speculated right now that next season will be called Season of the Worthy. Maybe it's not speculated. Has that been confirmed? I haven't even been keeping up with it. Regardless though, at some point, I guess between now and next season, we'll be restoring the lighthouse if this data is to be true, which is kind of crazy for a number of reasons. Number one, it's the lighthouse. We're not going back to that weird temple that the nine kept trying to send us to where we would float in the air and it was just really funky. No, we're going back to the OG, baby. The OG. The lighthouse, baby. Pretty much Osiris's crib. The lighthouse just had a level of magic to it over everything else, right? It had a nice homey touch to it, a little bit of shade to keep you from burning yourself to death on Mercury. Overall, if this is to be true, and if Trials is coming back as Trials of Osiris, it'll most likely be 3v3 elimination, considering we do have Elim in the game as it's 3v3 old school mode. And with the lighthouse coming back, you know what that means, boys. That means we're going to have the treasure chest back. Huh? Oh, some of you don't know what the treasure chest is. Well, it was a hell of a thing because it gave you some nasty loot. And if you went flawless, it gave you even nastier loot. So, so far, those are the data mines in regards to trials. There's been some other speculation going on or some other stuff that got data mine. Things like Twitch Prime is now going to be giving us rewards in game. What? My man Officer Payne in here stated that Twitch Prime rewards will come in groups of four each month for six months. The first four that will be released with Twitch Prime and its rewards is Service Regime, its ornament Coupe de Main, a Ghost Shell Skyline flip side, and a ship unsecured outcry, which will be obtained through the Twitch Prime rewards and can be picked up from Amanda Holiday. And as you see, they're the top four items. Soros, the weapon ornament, as well as the ghosts in the ship will be the exotics that you can just simply obtain. And I don't really know how you obtain it. I'm assuming that you can't just go in there and get Twitch Prime and all of a sudden, bam, you got exotics. I wonder if it's going to be similar to something like Borderlands, right? where you actually have to do something on stream with the content creator to actually obtain these things. Either way it goes, major changes, boys. Again, we'll be covering Breakneck as soon as we can get back into the game. Hopefully, that'll be soon, though, as Bungie's working hard right now to get these bugs fixed. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>